has anybody worked in mid-side in the analog world? Mid-side strictly comes from, has anybody done bi-directional miking with mid-side two microphones? It's the same exact concept, but now in an analog signal chain rather than a mic signal chain. This is for your line level. And the beauty of it is it opens up a whole other world for a mastering engineer to actually really change the sound of his mix way more than if he just had left and right and can really get into do some details. When mixing it, when you send your stuff to a mastering engineer and he does stuff that you had no idea how he did that, a lot of the times it was the option of having stuff mid-side. For those of you who don't know, and I'll try and explain it as easily as possible, is it's a coding. It's an analog coding setup. And again, it had been originally used in a microphone setup where you would have a cardioid mic facing you and then a bi-directional <laughs> mic split out left and right. And it was actually be, you'd have three feeds, flip the phase on one, and you'd have the control of your stereo program. It's the same thing here. So on your second insert, you would pop in, there, they put an S and M rather than an M and S. <laughs> and now, I have the master passive, and you have to use an EQ that's detented. It's got to be a high quality EQ that's got detented pots. If it's a variable pot, you're going to have phase issues, uh, and your images may collapse, which is just the opposite of what you're trying to achieve. And how I use it, and how when I first discovered it in 99, 2000, uh, became an essential tool in how I work, is where your background vocals mostly tend to sit in a mix? On your sides, on your stereo sides. Where does your lead vocal typically sit? In the middle. Dead up in the middle. Say you've got a lead vocal that's sitting there comfortably. He's fine. She's crisp. But the background vocals are a little dull. Now, the first thing a measuring near you know, we do grab 5K, and, you know, sweep in between 4 and 10K, sweep in there and try and brighten up your background vocals. But now you just brightened up your lead vocal as well. And you didn't want to do that. They're like, great. Background vocals sound phenomenal now, but my lead vocal sounds scratchy and a little nasty. This is the beauty of working in MS. You can now EQ just the stereo sides. This EQ, it's on your second insert, it gets a decoded or encoded signal. Well, now all the mono program goes to the left channel, and all the stereo, stereo program, not just left or right, left and right stereo material, goes here. As a result, what I commonly do is somewhere in 5K, 6K range, I'll boost, and I'll also do it lower around 180, so I can get the crisp of the chorus vocals and the body of the chorus vocals. And now I'm just affecting that stuff. And I'm not changing my kick, my snare, my lead vocal at all. Say I want to change my lead vocal. Say now that this is nice and sizzly, because you know, chorus vocals typically are sizzly. I can grab 1K. I can grab anywhere between 700 and 2K and start working that center. Sometimes I will need to do a little 5K in the middle, but now I've got the control. I'm not fixed on having to have it exactly what I needed it on my background vocals. So now I can do a little of this, and I can do a little of this. And I can do it without increasing volume overall. I can just grab certain things and just make this stuff out here, sizzle on your ears, and make sure that body is still, still, letting, still sitting there with the lead vocal. Any questions? Again, please just interrupt me and ask. I've tried plugins that do it in the Pro Tools world that actually already have the EQ set up for the mid-side, it just doesn't sound the same. That sounds horrible. It just, yeah, I've tried it on a few, a few different ones. Another oddity, again, doesn't happen often, but I have the option. If I get a track that's got way too much reverb, it feels like it was mixed in the 80s. Like, oh my god, <laughs> like, really? Commonly, big reverb sits in the stereo sides, and you can just take it and subtract it 4 dB, and you're like, all right, you know, it's not as reverby now, it's a little bit less. Now it's made in the late 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to be doing this completely exaggerated so you can hear. So I'm, right now, I'm going to be grabbing about 4.7K on the stereo side.
That's strictly again, strictly on the sides, nothing in the middle. Now there's also obviously some balls in that keyboard. I want to maintain that as well, so that's why I'll grab the 150, 170. So now you leave vocals kind of lost and buried. I'm doing everything extremely exaggerated right now. <coughs> I'm just going to strictly EQ the sound. Stay here, wait, let the black spiders crawl. You see If you mono your signal and flip the phase on one side, you have both options. Stay here, wait. That's strictly what's going on in the stereo program. And that is one of the first places where you can hear distortion. You might be printing a mix that you're working on and think it sounds fine, you're not hearing any distortion, and do that, and you're gonna hear on pretty much, if you've pushed it pretty hard, every time there's a kick drum, and you wanna have all this other music clouding, hearing that, or masking, masking those distortions. So this is one great way uh, to check. You can do this on Pro Tools, you can do this on any, you know, most consoles that have a center section. Stay here, wait, let the black spiders grow. you see all population under. This crack truly has vocal in the sides. 